Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our first developer study group. We're going to be talking about the admin area today. And I'll give my reasoning for why I chose that as the first place we're going to dive into. But uh, first, I just want to extend a welcome uh, in thank you for joining. I, I, every week I do one of these things, I'm always excited about it. <clears throat> and I, I would say this week is no different at all. Um, I'm actually getting one a comment here to share a link, so I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, there we go. All right. So, yes, we are. I, I'm especially excited this morning uh, because we're getting into something very practical. Uh, it, it's one of those challenges for me in in pulling together these uh, the certification challenge. How much do I focus on uh, a specific group of people, right? Because then that kind of excludes everyone else. Um, and today... From what I've seen, the majority of you are studying for your professional or expert, formerly known as associate or professional tests. And you know, it's my goal to uh, help and to uh, help well help everyone pass the test. And there's a ton of information that is generally applicable, uh, as well as some some of those more specific questions we get into as we start. Uh, diving into uh you know answering specific questions but today it is my goal to focus exclusively on professional and expert developer now these two tests again being the most common in this certification challenge they are a uh how do i say this it, there's a lot of similarities on this one particular topic we're going to discuss. And so that's why uh, I'm looking forward to talking about it. I, I have some notes, which as you can see the, uh, the printer, well, we had something sitting on top of a print of the printer, a laundry basket sitting on top of the printer. So they came out looking kind of funny, but uh, nevertheless, they are still good notes and we will be able to uh, work through them uh, today. So let's start off with our usual introductions. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's like Simon and Arnold's and Ruggiero and, uh, Jignes and everybody is here. It looks like uh, I won't say everybody's name because uh, there's there's plenty here. That is exciting. That is wonderful. Uh, let's drop in the comments here again just so I'm aware. What uh, certification are you going for? Because I know the general statistics uh, for this uh, for our certification programs. But um, I'd be really curious to hear what certification are you going for here this morning. So, uh, yes, welcome. Come on in. So if you drop that in the comments, that would be helpful. Uh, hey, maybe the funny, it'd be really funny if actually everybody's going for front end and JavaScript developer, and then I would have a little bit of a problem, but, uh, cause I've been more prepared for professional and expert. So, yep, I see, uh, I see expert here coming on in. Okay. Uh, professional. Good. And, and just to remind everybody, we are looking for what test I'm looking for. What test are you going for here, preparing for, and thus being part of this, uh, uh, conversation this morning, expert. Yep. That's what I'm seeing. Mostly expert and professional. Excellent. Good. <laughs> You know, as the English idiom says, I'm glad I am barking up the right tree. So that's that's good. All right. So um, today's format's going to be very different than what we've done before. In fact, today's format's going to be different than anything I believe I have ever done live. I believe in practical instruction. I believe incredibly deeply in practical instruction. That's why I've the the two courses I've done where I can do it. Business practitioner is a little bit different. It's it's harder. It's more piecemeal or pieces that are uh, practical but in expert and in, in, in professional tests we, we get really practical we build an application that is useful it actually has real world value to it and in this case uh, what we're going to be doing is is you know we only have an hour give or take but I still it still has to be practical it still has to be something that you receive value from from and that it makes sense because I think what can be especially difficult is working through a study guide or, or some notes or something, and it just doesn't seem to have any practical value. I, I remember when I was studying for the PHP, uh, well, the Zen engineer. Um, I, I don't know. I was probably 15, 16, something years old. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of the stuff there just didn't make any have any real world value to me it's like why why would this matter to me at all it, it didn't seem to make any sense so I am committed to change that here and yeah so let's 
Uh, let's uh, jump in. Um, let me make sure my slides. Okay. So, so here's the deal. I reviewed as one of the one of the benefits of us having these certification programs. I get to see scores, and I love seeing these scores because it helps me understand the average weaknesses that people have. Now, you could be different. You might be an absolute expert at this subject, and the subject we're going to talk about today is the admin area. There is a, an objective on the professional developer and on the expert developer talking about the admin area. And typically speaking, we like to just use the, uh, what do I say, the controls that are available to us. We don't like to break out of the box, which can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. We were working, we've been working on a project here recently on the art, the agency side at working for merchants. And that was a case where uh, those developers just only used the Magento components that were available and it, that created some bad user experience. But what I'm hoping to focus in on today is, is understanding what components are available to us. And I think understanding those in the right light means that we will say, we will understand what context those are good to use in and when we need to break out of those. So my, my idea is to give the full is to give a little bit fuller of a picture as opposed to just focusing on the UI components or whatever is available, but also how can this be used in the broader picture, which ultimately will help us again uh, toward our tests. Admin HTML is the area that is what scored the worst, the absolute worst on the expert developer test. And I think a good reason for that is that the their UI components seem scary and UI components are covered in expert developer. Now on professional developer, formerly known as associate, the score was a little bit higher. Um, it actually, yeah, so those who, on the professional developer, those who passed the exam or everybody, ev everybody who uh, took this exam got an average of 70 uh, points here on admin HTML. Those who failed, so obviously they got... A total of uh, was it 68 I think percent or less those average 51 percent so we definitely have a range of, of folks in the ad on the admin HTML side for professional developer back to expert developer those who passed well everyone got an average of 54 percent on this one 54 percent that's that's not good and those who just failed the test averaged 41 percent so I'm really grateful for these insights because it really helps me understand what are the general weaknesses. And I am that's why I'm kicking off this study group simply from the perspective of making sure we cover the most difficult topics first. Now, just to be just to be clear, I don't know exactly um, if we're going to be able to get through all of this this week. We might have to. Well, not next week, the week, week after in two weeks, we might have to pick up admin HTML again and finish it out, or we might be able to move on to something else in two weeks in our next developer meeting. But either way, um, admin HTML, I think overall and generally speaking, is a lacking area of expertise, and we need to shore that up. Uh, Simon asked, what is the passing score for expert developer? Uh, the passing score for expert, if my memory serves me correctly, is 62 or 63%. In other words... You can miss one out of every three questions and you will still pass. All right. So, again, in the idea of uh, very, very practical information, let's jump into what I call or what is known as a user story. This is going to describe what we are going to build here in this next hour. And, and again, if we have to run over into another uh, session, we can do that here in a couple weeks. But as an admin, I wish to see a list of exported orders so that I can quickly review the notes on each. Now this ties back into a module that we built in the professional developer certification prep course. Um, and so that's available obviously on Swift Otter. And we're going to build another area for that, kind of an extension of it. And I'll go through kind of what we are building from. It's really easy if you don't have that course to just build a table, throw some values in it, and then we can, and then you're ready, you're good to go here. So we'll, we'll cover that. So don't worry about that if you aren't able to, uh, if you have not yet uh, invested in that course. So that's the user story. Um, we want to see a list of exported orders. And actually, let me back up. 
the professional developer prep course, what we do there is we create the ability for a user to export an order to a third-party API. So if I come down here, um, and I and it's basically these this area right here, we add to the order view order screen. Um, we add a ship date, and we add some notes, and we click send order to fulfillment, and we go through in the admin panel or in the back end a whole process that's I believe really well architected. I go through my reasoning for that, how we come up with this solution, and we uh, we export this order to fulfillment. Now, when this order is exported to fulfillment, we now have a table that we are logging this information into. Now, this course just makes note that, hey, this order is has been already sent to fulfillment. That's what this course builds out on a order level. But let's say the admin has come to us or the store, uh, the, the merchant has come to us and says, hey, I wish to get just a log of all of these orders that are exported and especially because I want to see the notes that are associated with each. Uh, so otherwise they have to click into every order. Is this exported and can I see the notes that were associated with this order when it was exported? That is the user story. That is the background of what we are doing. So let's dive into some details as far as what we need to accomplish to fulfill this ticket that the merchant has submitted to us as developers. Well, we need a grid to view all exported orders. Notes must be visible in the grid. So we will be using the grid UI component. Number two, we will want also a store configuration option to only show completed orders. Now, we could also integrate this into the grid I specifically did it this way, again, because a very critical part of the admin area is store configuration. And we want at least a little bit of exposure to how this works. And we'll take a, a few extra minutes to understand how to work with store configuration as well. So store configuration is very important, as well as the capability for only specific administrators to see this panel. Now, I have taken these steps to go through and architect exactly what we are going to be building out here. And so I will stay on this slide here for a couple minutes uh, so that you can take notes as you would like. And then we're going to get in building. So again, this is the background. We have to get all this stuff out. Picture yourself as a developer. Um, and, you know, if you want to follow along or what I would suggest is watch, listen, take lots of notes. So here, go go take a moment to get some notes right Write down information, get a pen and paper, write down what you're learning. And then this next week or these next couple of weeks, do the exact same thing. If you need to rewatch this video, great. Rewatch this video in our Slack channel. Uh, if you don't have access to the Slack channel, email me joseph at swiftotter.com. I'll be more than happy to uh, get you access to our certification uh, area. Uh, it's a really vibrant community with people that care about certifications and are working to pass, get their Magento certification. So, um, yeah, so this is what we are going to be building out. Again, don't worry if we don't get it done today. I promise we will get it done here either this week or next week. Um, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we got to create a new module or we could build this into the existing module. I am creating a new one to keep things clean. Uh, configure ACL and an admin router. ACL, we're going to talk about what that is. Uh, basically, it's the ability for admins to have certain permissions and be able to do things and not do other things. It's very important, especially with PCI compliance, that a administrator only has access to what their job details they need to do. All, all administrators, administrators should not have access to everything. Obviously, we have super admins and they have access to everything, but those would be like management at a, at a, at a for a merchant. The customer service representatives should not need to, uh, for example, um, edit products, uh, generally speaking, and you would want to limit that access back. Customer service representatives should be able to uh, work with customers, uh, like edit customer information, create orders, view orders, shipments, invoices, etc. But that's about it. So we need to be able to control whether or who can see this information in the admin panel. Uh, add a controller. A controller makes it so that we can actually show information. Add a new menu item to link to the controller. If we create a controller, how it's not going to do any good uh, to uh, it's not going to do any good to create this uh, controller unless we can actually link to it. And we're going to talk about why that is too. Um, actually, let me take a note about uh, secret keys. 
because that fits into our first element of our conversation. Um, store configuration to only show completed orders as well as build UI, grid UI component. So um, that's where we're going at today. I am calling this module, Andy had a great question. He asked me, what are we going to call this? And I am calling it study group. So <laughs> you call it whatever you want to call it, um, but I'm calling it study group for today. Okay, move this out of here. Okay, so uh, let's see here. I think that's pretty much covers what I want to talk about. All right, so within all of this, it is my goal as well to merge these study guides. So I have taken the uh, professional study guide and I have taken the uh, expert study guide and I've kind of merged those together and to create the syllabus of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, there is a good bit of similarity. Remember, the expert developer takes things a couple levels deeper, and so I'm going to be walking the line between going really deep and keeping it uh, simple. But the one area that is not on the professional test is UI components, and we will be talking about UI components. So for those of you who are working to pass the professional developer, do not tune out. It's still really, really critical. All right, with all that said, let's dive into our first subject of describe common arch structure and architecture. So this is what you will find in the in the uh, study guide. And so again, we're going to be switching back and forth between study guide mode and code building mode. Um, all right, so describe the difference between admin HTML and front end. What additional tools and requirements exist in the admin? All right, so as we are looking to get started in this, we need to identify some of the differences. And let me drop this down. Oops, okay, okay, great. That's not gonna work, I'll let me I'll have to pull this out into a new window, okay. All right, so we need to be observant. And this is really, really critical to passing the test is being observant and being curious. So as I am looking, okay, what's the difference between admin HTML area and the front end area? One of the first things I see is this code at the end. Unfortunately, especially in Magento 1, it was often disabled. Magento 2, it was, it's, I find it enabled a little more often than not. It should always be enabled. This is called the secret key. And if you'll notice that every link, I don't know if you can, let me move my window up here a little bit. Every link here in the Magento admin has one of these secret keys that is associated with it. And look, it changes for every single one of them. In other words, you cannot access a second page on, in once you're in the Magento admin unless it has been pre-coded with this key. Now the question is, is, what goes into creating this key? Well, that's a great question, and I think it would be worthy of quickly trying to figure this out. Let's uh, search for, I think I call get URL in here. Yep, okay, uh, so I'm gonna jump into this. So this is created in the URL interface. So Magento, oh, you can't see that up there. Let me move this down, there we go. Magento Framework URL Interface. This secret key, and, and then again, what I'm saying here is, these are the questions you need to be asking yourself, and not only asking the question, but you must be doggedly pursuing getting the answer. All right, so I'm gonna click into here. So we see there's several different types of URLs. We see there's a uh, framework URL and a Magento backend model URL. We're in the admin area. I think it'd be pretty safe to say that we would want to look at the backend model URL. Let's set a breakpoint here. We will refresh the page. And it triggers pretty quick. All right. And again, this is why the debugger is so critical. You literally cannot be a good. I think I will honestly say, in my opinion, I have, a, I have a very hard time understanding how you can be a good developer unless you have a debugger properly configured and use it all the time. All right, so the, the route path doesn't matter here. Let's just look at how the secret key is created. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, we're collecting up some information here. Route name, controller name, action name, got it. It's all pretty straight. We're just doing a variable assignments. Secret key. Is of uh, if this is cache secret key, okay. We're gonna step into this get secret key. So get uh, step in is F7. 
Uh, salt, get form key. Okay. So the form key, as we will see in, we have cookies. Uh, I think, oh, nope, the form key is not. Okay. On the front end, the form key is set in a cookie. On the back end, I don't think it is. The form key is set in the session itself to be able to, uh, again, help uh, track that this request was legitimate. So that if the form key is set in the session and it is validated on the other end, that means that we are, uh, that this is a correct, this is a valid um, request. This, is, this has been initiated by our application as opposed to uh, trying to come from someone else. I think that's, it's for the cross-site scripting, cross-site scripting uh, request forgery. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Okay, so uh, we have our salt. If someone wants to drop that in the comments, that would be helpful. What the name of that, uh, and I, it just escaped me. All right, so we have our secret. Uh, secret. So we see basically we're appending the route name, controller, action, and salt. And we get a hash from that. So like I check some from this, and that is how our secret key is created. Right there, we learned uh, something new. Maybe new or not. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Um, the one thing that this does tell me is that the route name controller and action are part of the secret key. But if we notice, we have, this is the route name, uh, controller, and action. So route name, controller, and action. And then this is uh, some parameters. So order ID is the key name, or is the name, and, this, and three is the value. So I can change order ID three, two, four, whatever, and the secret key will not change. So that's a little trick right there that'll uh, that can save you some time. Thank you. Uh, cross site request, cross site request forgery. Thank you, Simon. That is exactly correct. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, this is what we are. Uh, uh, yeah, CSRF. That's right. Um, so that's just, that is the secret key. That is a difference between the admin panel and the front end. What's another difference? Well, let's let's think about this. Uh, let's actually jump out of our debugger here. What would be another difference? Well, mm, uh, let's let's think about this. Well, maybe the ACL, right? Cert can't admin administrators do certain things in uh, on in the admin panel. There's no such required rec restrictions on the front end. To an extent, uh, the B2B module with the company and the uh, restrictions there might be somewhat along the same lines, but it's certainly not within the purview of these tests because these tests do not cover commerce. They say commerce developer. But they do not cover Magento Commerce, just so we're clear on that. All right, so the ACL. Well, we will be talking about that here in a few minutes. So so that's kind of the illustration of what to be thinking through as far as the differences. And I know the study guides uh, break that out even further. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to dive too much uh, further into that. Okay, so with that in mind, I think the next step to take is to... Um, Let's just verify, yes. So let's look at the uh, configure ACL and the admin router for this particular module. In order to do that, we should probably come down into a module that already exists. And like I was talking about last week, the uh, module, the CMS module is a good starting place. It, it's not perfect. It does not follow all the latest paradigms. Um, but it works. It, it's pretty decent. So... Well, let's look at the uh, the CMS module and uh, try to under get a picture for what admin related functionality is present there. So we come into uh, module CMS, Etsy, uh, admin HTML. And what we also notice right here is we have area specific information. So these are area, very specific areas. We have Etsy, admin HTML, the admin HTML area, the front end area. And if we come up and look at uh, catalog, we will see that we have also catalog Etsy, and we actually have a few more areas too. So web API, SOAP, and REST. And looks like there's some configuration that is available for each one of those. So the idea here is that, for example, with our di.xml file, it's about configuring, wiring up uh, dependency injection. This is not necessary. We don't have to always do it for all scopes. Maybe it makes sense to do it for all scopes, but maybe we want, maybe we need to limit it down. In fact, uh, there was a bug I fixed yesterday. I can't remember the bug uh, in one for one of our merchants that literally the fix was to move the DIXML file, but there was only like one uh, one plugin specified for it. 
into in in shrink it the scope down into the admin HTML area. So right there, we see that we have an ad an H, an admin HTML area that is available to us for our uh, for configuration. And in this case, we might as well just use it. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's open up controller. Oh, we see a admin HTML directory in controller. Now this is actually somewhat magical. Uh, for when we are in the admin area, this the when the controllers are loaded up, they specifically are loaded up in ad, from the admin HTML folder. And I and I do not know off the top of my head whether this is area specific, other but I do know well it, it's not fully area specific because these are for the front end. Oops. These right here are for the front end, and this is for the admin area. So it's not fully um, area specific at that point. All right. Uh, the one other file to look at is acl.xml. So if we are going to go create permissions, say our cust our our users only some of our users can access this new area. Well, then we would have uh, we would need to edit something and we'd need to locate this in or create our own acl.xml file. Let's take a quick look at this again. We are trying to understand the picture of how Magento uses this because we're going to copy this and use this for our own purposes. ACL.xml here in the module CMS directory. Okay, so um, ACL resources, uh, resource ID of Magento, Magento backend admin. Now, if we were to go through several of these ACL files, we will notice that this is necessary. All three of those, all four of those elements. I've made the mistake more often than I care to recall of eliminating resource ID here, uh, the Magento back, uh, backend admin. That's like the root node of ACL. Uh, so we really need that uh, in our ACL.xml file. Uh, okay. Oh, yes. And another mistake I very commonly made is putting ACL.xml inside admin HTML because it only makes sense for goodness sake. Yeah, it does because, well, the ACL is not av available to the uh, front end, right? Well, actually, the ACL is, can be used in Web API requests. In fact, if we were to come down here and open up our webapi.xml file, we will see that the resource ref Magento CMS page. So might that be why ACL.xml is not included in the admin HTML folder? Yeah, and it would make sense to me uh, if that was if that's the reason because we'll see for the all of these CMS uh, requests we have a the resource reference is uh, referencing back to the ACL.xml, which brings me to another point of uh, and this is beyond the scope of what we're wanting to talk about today, but the, it's good to click through and understand what every one of these Magento files does, or at least configuration files does. So that you have a good picture of this because. Uh, I do remember some conversation about this stuff on the test and specifically in relation to resources and how this works. So this resource specifically references, in fact, if I was to search for this, looks for this specific item right here. Arnold's, yes, good, good point. Thank you, thank you. Um, going into the XSD file is helpful for learning. Uh, absolutely. So basically, if we went in, we wanted to see what options, what configurations are available for one of these XML files. We can go browse through the Magento files, but if we want to get the full picture, we need to search for, uh, let's let's do acl.xsd. So instead of XML, it's XSD. And include non-project items. All right. So we see Magento Framework ACL Etsy. Click into here. And now you can go through and see what options are available. It's, it's a little bit obtuse to understand, but it will give you every single option that is available because this is the uh, syntax checker for our acl.xml file. Yes, all right, very good. So I think the first thing we should do is we should go create our own acl.xml file. And what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to copy this entire file, go up here, uh, new file acl.xml, I'm going to drop this in. All right, so we know we have resource ID as Magento backend admin. And all right, so the question is, do we want to 
use another uh, resource. To, we can embed our resources in others. So we see Magento backend content, Magento uh, backend content elements. So we're, they're kind of embedding this in. And I'm guessing Magento backend content was specified somewhere already simply because it's missing title and translate and sort order, et cetera. So this was probably specified elsewhere. We could, if we wanted to, we would say, well, where would this fit in? If we're going to create a switch in, uh, well, to determine whether you can view exported orders or not, that kind of fits into the sales. So if we drop down in here to Magento uh, module sales, and Etsy, and... Well, let's see here. This would be acl.xml. We see Magento backend admin. So again, that same root node. We see module sales sales. So let's copy this out. And we'll do this. And remember, we're, we're redeclaring it. So it is important, though, to make sure in our module uh, XML file that our sequence depends on this. And also in our composer JSON, which I don't have that in here, but that would prob probably be good to add as well. And make sure everyone, if you have questions, jump in. I see I see these great comments here. Bargav um, Web API can also be used using both customer as well as admin if we want to use some admins to not access some resources and we can create common ACL.xml. Uh, yes. So Web API can be accessed. Uh, there are several different access methods for the API. I'm not going to get into that here uh, specifically because uh, Professional doesn't cover that. But yes, if you are taking expert, it's good to familiarize yourself with the different uh, authentication modes, whether it's anonymous, um, customer, or a specific uh, ACL node uh, to be able to authenticate for um, API access. All right, so I'm going to literally take and copy one of these here. Drop it in here. I'm going to call this Swift Otter Study Group. And um, view exported orders. Okay. It's pretty simple. I'm going to go delete that. We'll make sure we keep our hierarchy correct. And that's where proper code formatting can go a long ways in order to do that. Uh, yes, yeah, you also go into the admin panel. And that's one thing, actually, also, I'm glad you bring that up, um, Arnold. Um, it's very easy in these areas to, it, it, when studying, to only look at the code. But the Magento admin, especially on the professional developer, is pretty well covered, especially in one of the lowest scoring sections on the professional developer is anything related to the admin panel. So we can get so such tunnel vision focusing in on... Uh, the admin area are focusing on the code that we forget to understand how the admin works in some of these bigger picture items. Uh, Andy, yes, every ACL has to have the root node Magento backend admin. And believe me, I've done it without that before and it's caused me some problems. I'm like, why in the world does this not actually, is this not showing up in the tree? Well, that's why. Okay. So, um, all right. So I think that We'll, we're going to test this out, uh, but I think this should take care of our, our uh, ACL. For some reasons, when I flush the cache on my computer, it can get really slow. Um, I still like to have my debugger going. It's much faster without the debugger, but for today, I'm going to leave the debugger on, so I'm going to try to narrow down the number of times I flush the cache. Okay, so we have our ACL.xml file. One of the next things, if we come back to our technical details, is to understand... Uh, adding a menu item link to the controller. So uh, actually, no, let me back up. I first, let's, let's do create the admin router. We'll create the controller. We'll, we'll go through it in the list, this order. I was thinking about doing it in a different order, but we will not do that. All right, so let's come back down here to our module CMS example module. And we need to configure routing in Magento. We need to make sure that Magento understands that our module can accept or understands uh, URLs or uh, people visiting a, these specific pages. So if we come into module CMS, Etsy, admin HTML, and we will um, look at, well, let's just glance through some of these files. You should be familiar with some or maybe all of them. Okay, so this is our DIXML. Um, 
I hope to cover this in detail in another uh, study group, but preferences, types, specifying our constructor arguments, uh, et cetera, that's all here. Our menu, we will be getting into this here shortly where we configure a menu to go to our controller. Our routes, our route is uh, basically telling Magento again that, and this is what we're gonna configure now, this is what our, our, uh, our module is available to listen to URLs that are reviewed. Okay, um, so let's take, let's just copy this file up, drop it into create a new admin HTML directory. Routes.xml. Okay, uh, I think we have a great question here. I just saw this. Uh, Andy, is view underscore exported underscore orders, is that random? 100% random. Uh, in many cases here, the actual value does not matter so much as using the same value is what matters. So as we reference this, is whether we create a, uh, a reference to this in webapi.xml, well, we would just use this entire resource ID. And one thing I, I do like in the Magento XML is it seems like the nomenclature often matches. So resource ID, so this is this resource ID, but if we come into, oh, let's just open up a web. Oh, maybe I actually had one left in my other one. Yes. If we come into here, uh, resource ref. So it's very similar, but it's kind of the same nomenclature. Resource ref referencing another resource, re reference an ID. Okay. Um, all right. So we have we have great questions coming in. Let me let me jump back down. I think the next one is in relation to our routes. Okay. Uh, so, yes, it, uh, Andy. Yes, it needs to be unique, but it can be whatever value you want it to be. It just has to match across the across the board. Um, Arnold's asked, "Why is there a before attribute?" To be frank, I am not a hundred percent sure. Other than uh, sorting, uh, so making sure that. I think Magento backend will be the last router to be matched. So we're saying we want our, in this case, it's not Magento CMS. It'll be Swift Otter Study Group. We want this to be reviewed. We want our this to be uh, the the controllers in this um, in this module. We want this to be reviewed first before going to Magento backend, which I believe is the 404 page. Ha ha ha. Hi, Tarth. Great question. Great question. All right. So you're, we're going to just, we're going to get there in one second. But man, I just love this. This is awesome. Uh, always, always, my friends, don't forget to delete out the Magento copyright. This is now our code. And it's, it's, to me, it's this code smell when we leave it in there. So router ID is admin. Now, let's see here. Uh, come back down to the module CMS page, uh, directory. And again, this is where it's curious. We say, well, why is there a router ID of admin? What does that do? Well, let's come and compare. We see that we have routes.xml here. So maybe we have routes.xml in a front end directory. We do. And we see router ID is standard. Now, great. I'm not going to take the time today to understand like how we have, how we could configure a new router ID. That's pretty basic, or that's pretty low level framework changes. And we're not going to get into that, but I think suffice it to say to pass the test, and again, that's what I'm focusing on is passing the test here. We have router ID as standard for the front end and admin for the back end. All right, now the age old question of the difference between route ID and front name. In almost every case, these are the same. However, in the cases where Magento wants to throw you for a loop, or maybe write some questions about this, uh, there is a, a big difference. Uh, the front name is what is used in the URL. So just always keep in mind, front name, URL, front name, URL. It's kind of the front of this controller, how we access this controller or navigate to this controller. That's the URL. Front name is the URL. Uh, the ID though, which again is you almost, it should be, let's just put it this way. It should always be the same but the ID is used for calculating the layout handle. And Simon uh, answered it 100% correct. So he is on a good track to passing this test. Um, the layout handle. So the layout handle is used to locate uh, what XML is applicable here. So if we come in down to view front end layout, all requests that are for, 
All requests w will start with the route ID when it's looking for the layout handle. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. All layout handles start with the route ID. Then they move into the controller, then they move into the action. So in this case, uh, we have view front end layout. We have CMS. This matches front route ID CMS matches right here. Now the controller is the directory in which it is found in here. So whether the, if for admin that is found, it is the controller is found inside admin in HTML, or the controller is one of these directories here. You always have to put a, a put your controller file inside of a directory inside of controller. So there always will be a uh, a directory inside of a, the controller directory. I think I said that correctly. And then we jump into the action, the directory, which then contains our actions. And uh, the action name, like for example, controller index index, is what we have CMS index index. So I think that see how that uh, that should make hopefully make sense. So the route ID calculates the first part of the layout handle. The directory inside controller or admin HTML is the controller name, uh, which would be index no or no route or page. And then fi the final value of this layout handle is the actual file name that is executed. Now, if there is multiple directories deep, which you can do multiple directories deep, the controller is is the name is basically all the directories separated by an underscore. So uh, yeah, so if it's, uh, for example, if it's controller and then index and maybe we had uh, test and then index.php inside a test, something like, uh, like this. Oh, come on. I can't do that. Okay, fine. Um, do this. If we had like this, the layout handle would be CMS. So that's the route ID in underscore index, underscore test, test, underscore index. So that's how that would, no, how that would be. All right, let's catch up on some questions here. Oh yes. Uh, Simon said, I hate when people don't use the same ID and front name for route. Um, honestly, I think, uh, it would be, it, it, to me, it's a sign of uh, being an amateur, uh, just because that's that should. Once you understand the reason why, then it clicks. It's like okay, they can be the same and they should be the same, uh, and so hopefully I can help get every all of you past that. That there. Um, awesome. Uh, splits by underscore. That took some practical work and then understood. Okay, cool. Excellent. All right, let's let's keep let's keep pushing on this. I think we're making progress. Wow, it's nine forty one already. Time flies, and I'm not as far as I hope to be. That's that's okay. We we will get through this eventually. Um, what if the ID is uh, CMS handle? Um, well, you know what? Let's see here. If I take a moment, I will try to take a moment when we get our controller fired up, and we will step through how the layout handle is calculated. I think that should help answer the question. So. Um, but I think for the time being, let's call it, um, and again, these, so we're going to jump back in here, but then I will, I will try to get, hi Tarth, I'll try to get your answer, your question answered here in a minute. All right, so let's just call this um, view, ex, yeah, export, view, export, uh, Magento, yep, I think that should work. Now, the next thing is to go create a controller. Um and this is specifically covered in professional, but these concepts uh, are used in the Magento admin uh, or in, in, in expert as well. Oh, yeah. So using the hyphen instead of a dash. I do not know, but I think, you know what? Let's just let's just see what it does. Uh, we'll just drop that in here. I think so, but I, I can't remember if, it, if, yes, Preston said he thinks that the layout would be uh, like CMS dash handle underscore directory underscore action, but I, I I not sure if um well first if there's validation, uh and then also if there's if there's maybe if it'll be slugified down to that I I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure okay so let's go create ourselves a controller now a controller in the admin panel uh, again I always 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 reference especially when we're learning this always reference back to what Magento has done already for us. So if we are building a um, a grid, which is ultimate, which is our ultimate goal, let's come over to here and let's find what this grid looks like. Let's see then how to understand what controller is triggered from 
a given URL. So let's come into content pages, right? Because I think if we remember correctly, there is a, a page or this is, this is a grid. So we'll let that load up. Yep. Those so right here. All right. So it's very important that we then understand the URL. So we have, um, admin dev, which is basically the front name and we can, we could delve into that. I think we talk about that in the, I know we talk about that in the expert course as far as how this whole thing is calculated. Um, but then we have CMS and we know that that's the, that is the front name. It is not the route ID. This is the front name we see right here. We see page and index. All right. So page and index. Well, the easiest thing, honestly, is to come down here. We know that our controllers are, are located inside admin HTML or controller admin HTML. Um, for a module CMS. Now, if we did not know where, which module hosted this particular controller, what I suggest doing is you can search the entire code base. You can search this, uh, or you can search, uh, the Magento directory. If you think it's Magento only, you can search for front name equals, uh, with that CMS. And we see right here, uh, two, and it's pretty easy to tell well, we're in the admin area, so it's going to be this one. So we now see that this is found, this controller has to be found in module CMS, most likely. There's a couple other ways you can work around that, but that's pretty much where it's going to be found. Okay. Um, all right, so we come into module CMS. We know that this is a controller. We know because it's rendering a page. We know that it's in the admin HTML area. So now we can start matching by directory. Uh, the next, so if we look at this, the next thing to match is page. We see there is a page directory here. The next one to match is index. And we see a index.php file right here. We open that up and we have a controller right here, an admin controller. And the cool thing is this seems really simple, right? I mean, this is just a plain, simple, basic admin controller. Awesome. Well, let's... Well, tell you what, let's copy this up into a controller slash admin HTML slash, and now we've got it. We have, we have to define our own controller directory. Uh, so I think I called it view order or order uh, view export, I think is what I called it. In some of this, this naming is a little bit difficult. It's like, what, what do you name this? I'm just going to call it the super basic. Uh, call it view, and then I'm going to drop index.php in there. So remember, if you do not specify the action or directory for a controller or for a in a path, the it will be substituted out with the default of index. So in this case, we can link to uh, view export slash view nothing else. So we normally think we need those three components in uh, to index.php and um, well, an index and the index will be automatically added to that. Yes, I 100% agree with you, Preston. All right, so now now that this is in my control, I go through and I clean this up. Um, let's see here. Uh, this would be Swift Otter Study Group Controller Admin HTML View. Do not forget to change your namespace, otherwise Magento will not be able to find it. Okay. The as of Magento 2.3, they now want you to specify your uh, what type of request is allowed here. So HTTP get action interface. This will be a get action. This we're not posting inf any information to this. I always like to come here. I do not like uh, fully qualified names in my code, so I will replace with ac uh, alias backend app action. Cleans it up. Okay. So now let's start getting into some more information here. Uh, admin resource. Well, this actually looks, we kind of already looked at this a little bit, uh, the, I, this idea, but admin resource, this sounds like an ACL reference to me. So if we just do a quick search for this, we can do a file mask of ACL. Interesting resource ideas, CMS page. So I kind of get the feeling that we can just drop our ACL in here. Swift Otter, view exported orders, drop it in there like that, and it should work. Now, it says C is allowed. 
I'm going to drop a breakpoint here because we want to, we probably, should, it would be good to go take a moment and review how that works. So we'll set a breakpoint there, come back to it when we refresh the page. Um, another little nitpick for me is I like to uh, shorten these up. Otherwise, they get incredibly long. And I certainly do not need uh, dock blocks on my constructors. Um, data persister, we know that we can specify this. And by the way, you will see this in a number of places where it's the object manager get instance. That is for backward compatibility so that if you like extended this class and did not specify this uh, this can, uh, this uh, item in the constructor, it's not going to blow up on you. Okay, uh, we don't need any of that magic either. Okay, we'll clean this out. We really want to make it good. We return page. Uh, framework view result page. Got it. Okay. Uh, set active menu. We're gonna we're gonna to the to do for this. Add this later. And we're gonna go through. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all right. So we'll work through this here in a minute. I don't think we necessarily need to touch this. Except we now need to do one other thing, which is add the menu item. Otherwise, there's no way we can access this because, remember, the secret key. So looks like that's going to be about all we're going to be able to get into for this week, which means that we'll be able to talk about UI components next week. Um, but I hope this is really unlocking the ideas of how you, of how you study, uh, simply because as we work through this and actually do it ourselves... There's debugging, there's working through the Magento core, but it's also this component of doing it ourselves. The The amount of our understanding is going to explode. It absolutely will. So uh, this is good. Uh, yes. Oh, good other good point. Ar Arnold said for Magento 2.4, it's changed to just implementing interfaces. Yes. Um, you still can extend uh, the an action. And I can't remember, maybe the... Nope, I don't think so. Okay, so I won't say that. Y yes, it is just implementing interfaces for uh, Magento 2.4. You still can extend an action, so it's backward compatible in that way, but don't. In 2.4, don't. However, the tests, as far as what I understand, are still for Magento 2.3, so I am developing against Magento 2.3. Okay. Yep. All right, that's great. So let's set a uh, breakpoint here. Oh, one other thing we do, we need to do do need to build out our menu here real quick. So I'm just going to copy this menu item up, drop it into admin HTML. We're going to clean it up. All right. So add ID. Um, okay. So let's let's review how this works. I think we're only going to need one menu item. Yeah, we'll just add one menu item. Um, oh, you know what? Let's. Much. Yeah, I think we'll just add one menu item. But I this is a jumping off. I'll tell you something that we you needed to go on your own take a look at. Okay. So ID. So we're gonna call this Swift Otter Study Group. The, the the concept for these IDs is module name, then whatever else you want to call it. Um you export it orders. It doesn't have this. This can be whatever. This is what will be referenced in other points in building out menus, but is there's no, no set standard. You can call this whatever you want. Do you export it orders? Module is Swift Order Study Group. Sort order uh, parent. All right. So this is the question is where do we put this uh, menu in the tree? So right here. Actually, let's let's look at this a different way. We can go find this this element in the code base, Magento code base. Or what we can do is what I suggest doing is we come over to your Etsy, um, admin HTML, menu XML, and we can see we can again get a picture for how these are built. Uh, I think this one is the root because this has no. Uh, there's no parent on this. So this will show on the sidebar, I believe. Um, but in this case, I think we'll just copy this. Let's see where the sales order. So like the orders in, this, in the uh, drop down here. Sales orders. Um, shows under sales or operation. So let's actually just copy this one in. I know I used the other one. But let's 
copy this one in. That'll make it easier. Because this has the same parent, roughly this everything the same what we want. Okay, so let's just now it's just a matter of plugging in some details. So Swift Otter Study, oops, Study Group ID. Uh, no, no, View Exported Orders, Exported Orders. We'll put this at a hundred. There's no reason to. Put this at the top of the list. We'll leave the parent the same. All right, the action. What do we put for the action? All right, so this is the front name. And I, I, I could be wrong here, but I believe that this is the front name. And then we send the uh, the uh, the controller, and then we have an action. So it would be index, view, and routes, view, export. Uh, yeah, right here. And then we copy in our ACL right here. And yes, these do match. Oops. These do match the uh, the menu name, menu ID, and the uh, ACL, but they have no connection whatsoever past that. All right. I think we're ready to go give this a, a try. And so I'm going to flush the cache. And refresh the page. Well, that does, let's take a moment to catch up here. I'm excited to get into UI components. Can't do them. Okay, yeah, Preston, it's looking like it's going to be our next developer study group um, based off of my time here today. We'll, so I, but I guarantee we are going to get into go get deep into some UI components. In fact, let's just say next study group, so two weeks from today, that'll be UI components. We will talk everything. I'll share everything I know about how to build. Well, not every, as much as we can fit into it in an hour, but I think that'll be a good starting place to give you lots of places to jump off from and I think it'll give you good confidence uh, with UI components. Um, okay, so I'm looking to do um, dev meetups every other week uh, and just general certification meetups every the other the off week. So so basically every other week originally was the the general certification meetup and every and then in the filler weeks we're going to do uh, developer study groups. Okay. No parent will put the item on the sidebar instead of the nested. Correct. Yes, that is my understanding. Um, excellent. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's good. Um, all right. So let's jump back in here. I see this is triggered. So like, this is this is what we got to dig into. So basically, um, okay. So this is this uh, Magento CMS page. We refresh it. It's here. Can't say for sure whether or not our, our menu item has appeared or not, but for right now, we're gonna take a moment and understand how ACLs work at a, at a, at a fairly high level. I suggest in your in your spare time that you would dive into this and, and study it in a little bit more detail. All right, the first thing we do is we see that our static admin resource, our admin resource constant is being loaded into this authorization is allowed. But this tells me is I can use authorization is allowed anywhere I want. If I am, uh, uh, creating some custom functionality somewhere, I can call authorization is allowed. And authorization is Magento Framework authorization. So this is a, this is one of those classes we can just tuck into our minds, back of our mind, and we can use it at any point that we would like to. Uh, Leonardo, is it possible to improve this module and add a web API to fill out the form and get the contents? Absolutely, yes. Uh, we can definitely do that. Um, in fact, in the okay, in the uh, professional developer prep course that I've uh, built, which is kind of what we're building on with this module here, in that one we have uh, we we cover all the this thing everything that is necessary to know to pass the the professional developer test, and that's my goal is, is keep it concise, focus it on that test. There's a whole bunch of other things we can talk about, and I and I intend to create courses on some of this other content as well. But then the, but I included a bonus, call it a bonus chapter, because the web API is so important of how to use the web API and um, go through all the information it needs to convert it over from, instead of using controllers, over into using the web API. All right, so back to this. All right, uh, which, whenever we see that we're an interceptor, that means that there is a plugin that is about to be triggered. 
And that means we can also create a plugin for this if we wanted to adapt the functionality. There is no plugin for this one, so we're going to go to is allowed. ACL policy is allowed. Uh, some, uh, some additional information here. Uh, we're going to jump in there. The session has user to get the ACL role for this user. So basically, we're saying we have a user. Now, what is the role ID that has been associated with this user? And that is all configured in uh, admin. There's admin user. This is where this is identified. And then um, authorization role and rule. So um, this is what associates a the user with a given role ID. We could even see exactly how this works. Um, yep, so it just loads the role on again. Oops, oh great, I just jumped past that. All right, we will... <laughs> That's the one problem with debugging is you get you get sidetracked and you can easily jump past it, but that's okay. Um, oopsie. Okay. There has been an error processing your request. Now, so let's go see what is going on. We'll copy this. Hit shift twice. Uh, and, of course, it's not being listed down here. Bar report. Oops. 130. So no pram action doesn't. Oh, here we go, High Tarth. Um, there we go. Uh, we we got the answer. Pram val action doesn't pass validation. View export view index does not match against um, pattern. Okay, so here's the next thing to do is where this where is this pattern? It does tell us here in a minute, uh, but actually we'll just do a quick search. Searching for the error is really helpful. Oops, well, that's not going to work because we have a uh, that escaped. Nope. Uh, for some reason, that's not pulling it up. All right, well, I'll just skip over here to this call stack. Back end. Now, of course, that won't load either. All right, well, either way, we're just going to quickly... Um, Go back here, clean that out. So yes, it, uh, we can see maybe the XML allows it, but the menu item does not allow it. So uh, one way we we got nailed. Routes, we're gonna change that out now. Maybe it still would work for the the uh, the route ID. It's possible. I'm gonna flush the cache. Any other questions that I'd be more than happy to answer here in our uh, last few minutes before we uh, sign off for this week in anticipation of next week. Well, next week and then the week after our next meeting will be coming up in two weeks. Any other uh, questions? So at the end of today, we should have a working controller. <laughs> That's right. But look, hi, Tarth. Listen, I, 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 I absolutely commend you for bringing that up. And that is the attitude. This that is one hundred percent the attitude. Yes, Arnold, I will share that with you, guys. Um, that is the attitude that is uh, totally required to pass this test. I, I cannot state that enough. Hi, Tarth, you, you totally nailed it. Like you think, what would happen if I do this? What would happen if I do that? And we learned something. So there is menu validation on. Uh, there is validation on the actions for menu items, but it doesn't seem to be any validation for. Uh, <laughs> for the routes go figure that's how it is but it is what it is at that point all right yeah if you didn't have to add a menu item it might still work but remember well in the admin you have to access it either through an admin a, at or a menu item or a link from another place and so it's still it might not work at that point but who knows at that point uh let's see here all right so let's jump at, back into our acl review quickly here all right this uh, acl builder get ACL is allowed. Um, okay. Get ACL, I think. Okay, is allowed. So we have a role, resource, and privilege. Role, get. This get, I think it's just collecting all this information. The 
double check. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, the, if there's uh, if there's rules available for this, um, nope, not the resources. So yep, it's diving in, and the resource ACL resource backend admin. So it's kind of iterating through these, finding which one is is available. Um, whoops, I already jumped back out of that. Okay, well, um, it's pretty basic uh, looking up. To make sure that this admin URL resource is, or this admin resource is allowed. Okay. Let that pop up here. We'll see. We'll see if this works. Uh, Simon said you didn't get access to the Simon or the, the, the Swift Otter GitHub. Yeah, uh, feel free to email me Joseph at Swift Otter or learning at Swift Otter with your GitHub or GitLab. Actually, well, uh, depends. You're for on order X. Or, uh, I cannot remember. Send me, if you want, since I cannot remember off the top of my head, send me a uh, your GitLab and GitHub user IDs, and we'll get you added. All right, sales, exported orders. We got that right here. Okay, so at this point, I think we're in pretty good shape. Now, we need to change this out for uh, to be, actually, let me just stop the execution. Remember, you can always do that at any point. Stop the execution. It's a huge time saver, especially if you're working on an order that is being submitted. It's really nice to not have to go back and uh, have to resubmit an order a whole bunch of times. All right. I think this is under sales. Sales. Uh, view. What did I call this? Exported orders, I think. I can't remember. And then we'll just, I don't think we need, we honestly, actually, we don't need it. Well, this, the interceptor has already been created, so we'll leave the data persister here, but we don't need it. Um, exported orders. Data persister, I think, uh, basically saves data from when you're saving something, uh, and then there's like an error, but it still persists the data so that the data was not wiped out when the error is shown and, the, and it is redirected back to the original. Okay. Uh, a couple other questions. This does show me an important detail. Use, yep. Client one doesn't want to use underscores in the URL for SEO reasons. Okay. Yep. Uh, that can be an issue. Now, one thing in that case, um, and I, I can't pronounce your name, da Dajveg, something like that. Uh, one thing to note in this case is you can use custom URLs. We're not diving into that. I think the professional, the expert developer will talk a little bit more about that. That's with routes. In those cases, I would suggest using routes as opposed to using the Magento default routing system. The Magento default routing system is pretty ugly. Uh, basic works, but it's not ideal. Um, add the add breadcrumb require the string twice. Ah, uh, good question. Well, let's see here. Um, we have the label and the title. So um, I would, I am not 100% sure. Add link, label, title. We have to see where this is referenced. Um, probably get links or something. I'm guessing that the label is kind of the back end edition versus the um oh, okay. There we go. Simon, thank you. That, that's great. Um yeah, so I think I'm guessing the label is silent, the title or the label is silent. The, the label is hidden, that um the title is what is shown. So you can just uh, do that twice. Custom URLs require a custom router, correct. Uh, and you can easily configure that in, so it would be a good example. I think uh, Magento module CMS and uh, Etsy. Oh, actually, here, here's one of the tricks I saw. A module CMS controller router. So let's just search through here. Actually, I know it'll be in front of DI XML. Ah, right here. So we have our uh, our type name, our type router list. Um, we are adding new routers to that, and it's adding a CMS router into here. So we just specify the the class, jump over to the class, and we can see that um, basically a router has to match. Um, it returns an action interface. So um, you can then uh, create. You can either redirect, or you can send back. So it's basically sending the page here. 
set mo uh, module alias. So basically what this is doing is um, it is, okay, <laughs> this is another thing we can talk about, the difference between redirecting and forwarding. So this router basically is, is hit uh, and it is saying, and then we are left to determine, or the CMS, Magento CMS page router is saying, okay, is this, do I redirect or is it does this page exist? And if this page exists, we forward it over to the ugly Magento routing system. And that allows us to, over, to to accept a new unique URL. We can accept any URL at that point, customize it, whatever we want to do. We can we can we can create this custom URL, or the yeah custom URL system. And I've done this a lot of times because again Magento routing is really ugly. But then you use the forwarder to then redirect it hidden. So redirect or forwarding does not actually change the URL. It just changes what. Um, the, the functionality that is attached to it. Ah, yes, okay, that's great. Thank you for uh, clarifying there, Dave. I uh, appreciate that. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think, well, no, actually, so Dave, um, on the front, that's the, we got an error when we had it, it had a dash in there. So, um, ultimately SEO does not matter for the back end, but for the front end, if, if it's really important to have a, uh, routing with a, um, with dashes in it, like a URL with dashes in it, you might want to create a custom router, which again, gives you great control over how, how this renders and how it works, uh, quite nicely. So, okay. Excellent. Yeah, this is, this is, this has been really good. Um, any other final questions before we uh, wrap it up and call it a day here? Making sure I caught up on all my uh, the the chats. So yes, Dave, and now now I know uh, uh, that uh, your your name. So I appreciate I appreciate that. Thank you. Use custom router. Do we require? Oh, hi, Tarth. Again, great question. Uh, custom router class for the front end. Do we require custom router class for admin area? Ah, uh, no. Basically, no. I would. If you need a custom router class, you might want to consider using the API. Uh, and I say that slightly facetiously because uh, the, using the API in the admin is, is a really, really good thing to do. Uh, but you have a lot more flexibility with route names with the API. Um, and then you just create some JavaScript and fetch stuff from the API on the back end. So that, that does work. Um, validation failure is looking up the ID though. Yeah. You know, to be frank, I would have to dig into that a little bit more, um, and to see problems. I don't want to take you all's time, but let me, once I am done here, let me take a, just a couple minutes and I will f flesh out that answer uh, for you. And I will drop it in our Slack channel. Excellent. All right. Well, this has been, this has been really good. Uh, thank you for hanging with me today. Uh, next week, I think we are, we are on a trajectory for not next week. Two weeks from now, we're going to talk about UI components, and we're going to dig into that. Uh, maybe we're going to end up taking two weeks on UI components. There's a lot there, a ton there, um, way more than, well, way more than I can certainly cover in an hour. Um, but okay, excellent, yes, uh, wonderful, and I I wish you all a wonder an excellent week. Uh, make sure to drop questions in the in the Slack channel here again. I, I love to see uh, your all's participation. And uh, again, thank you for joining the, the video today. It's, it's an honor. It's a pleasure to be with you all. Thanks for the interaction. And um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing a whole bunch of uh, people get certified through this, uh, through this challenge. So anyways, hope you have a wonderful day and keep studying.